Okay, what is up, Connect7 family? I hope you're all having a fantastic day, fantastic morning, night, whatever it is that you're doing, whenever it is that you're listening to this episode. I hope nothing but the best even after this episode. But today we actually have someone super cool coming in. His name is Wesley Wallace. I'm really excited to actually bring him on. It's been a few weeks in the making. Um, as you guys know, I've been saying I want to do something different, having different people on, different perspectives. And he is actually a public defender. And I'm going to let him pretty much introduce himself. But as you guys know, we've been talking about mental health as well lately. And when I met him, which we actually have some mutual friends, but when I met him um, leaving work and stuff like that, he brought very unique perspectives. And I'm actually really excited to bring those about so we can like discuss those more. But with that being said, guys, um, we're going to get started here. So Wesley, if you can introduce yourself, let people know who you are, what it is that you do, a fun fact about yourself, all that. Sure. So uh, nice to meet everybody. My name is Wesley Wallace. Um, like Thaddeus said, I'm a public defender, which means I'm a criminal defense attorney, which um, a lot of people think that there's a distinction. I've had many a clients tell me after a trial or after a hearing, damn, man, that was pretty good. You're almost as good as a real lawyer. <laughs> um, so <laughs> just, just to kind of put that to bed, I guess, necessarily, um, which means so public defender is just a criminal defense attorney that. Um, is state appointed if you can't afford your order, your own attorney. So obviously most people know that attorneys cost a lot of money. Often they, you have to pay by the hour. Um, sometimes, you know, you can pay all in one lump sum, but oftentimes you have to pay by the hour just to talk to them on the phone, let alone to work on your case. So as you can imagine, that gets very expensive. So oftentimes people have to opt for the public defender's office. Um, and then in that scenario, if you get in trouble and uh, you can't afford an attorney, you'd get me. Um, and there's two different types. Well, I guess three technically. So within state court, there's a uh, county court, which is misdemeanor. Public defenders only dealing with cases where the maximum sentence could be 364 days in the county jail. Hmm. And then when you have felonies um those are crimes that can be punishable by up to one year in prison or longer or you know death penalty what have you mm -hmm. then you have federal public defenders if you're charged federally um all of those pretty much every federal crime carries a significant amount of prison time as well so i guess those are the types hmm okay you're educating me because i i didn't even know there were all these different types so that okay that's pretty cool okay okay so i'm definitely going to get back into that so another thing that i wanted to ask you what's a random fun fact about you Holy <laughs> random. i was on the boxing team at, uh in college For real? um didn't box until college gotten gotten to it because a good friend of mine um was was into it and said I should and, and just train with them. I did for a while. They had tryouts, uh, made the team, um, fell in love with it, and um, I try to keep up with it still. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a whole lot of places um, that'll allow you to just spar, kind of. Um, if you're not like training for an actual fight, which I'm certainly not doing anymore, <laughs> but it's definitely. Uh, my favorite form of cardio and stress relief. Interesting. I would have never got that. Definitely would have never got that. Okay. No, that's pretty cool. I mean, but you are in shape. Like I got to say, so guys, um, when I see Wesley, he's always dressed up. He's always looking sharp. <laughs> so let me say that this guy is super sharp. Like he stands out when he, he comes like down the stairs at my job, everybody notices him. So I, I, of course no it's the truth it's definitely the truth like um even when we like you know sometimes when i'm at work or whatnot um like we talk about like you know certain people who are super cool and then you know we'll see you i'm like yeah the one 
with you know he's always dressed glasses yeah yeah and I'm, yeah it's always good stuff about you always good stuff but that is of course of course my man i would have never i would have never got that but that is pretty cool like you said stressful mm-hmm. i i I have a friend of mine who's, you know, he's into martial arts, but I know he's talked about boxing as well. And he kind of says the same thing. He loves it for the cardio. It's great mm-hmm. for stress relief since he has to deal with a lot of like adults, kids and stuff like that. He's never mm-hmm. punched a child or nothing like that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, stress relief. I but, hear you. Right. Okay. So what I like to just dive right into it. So I remember when we were on the train and we yeah. were talking about mental health. And we were just saying like, you know, just how it's different for different people. And you brought a very interesting point of view when you were saying like the mental health for like your clients and stuff like that, the things that you see and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. if you can kind of, we can bring that conversation up to kind of catch them up. And then if you can elaborate more onto that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I remember we were kind of talking about it and I was basically saying how unfortunate it is that it's something that's not number one prioritized um, in the communities of people that I help. And number two, it's not something that's even taken into consideration oftentimes when um, an incident happens. Um, for instance, when 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 uh, an officer or someone comes on the scene and they, and they see somebody that they perceive as acting maybe violent mm-hmm. and they're really just, you know, suffering from a psychotic episode because they're off their medication or they got the wrong dosage or what have you. Um, number one, that that's not ever taken into consideration. That's it's, it's always just, you know, forceful apprehension first. And then number two, once the person is ultimately arrested and what have you, it's it's hard for at least us on our end to convince prosecutors to see and take things like that into consideration and say, hey, this person isn't just a violent person out here trying to, you know, you know, be a menace and and break shit and and, and hurt people. He was or she was sick or, you know, had a a temporary chemical imbalance or what, whatever was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, there's very, very, so, so the police don't really take into consideration. The prosecutors aren't really taking into consideration. Then when they're ultimately sentenced, it, the, there's, there's few things in the way of helping address that in the correctional system. So, you take somebody who has a mental health problem that, you know, presumably isn't being, you know, addressed or treated, and then you throw them in jail, that that's not going to fix the problem. The problem was their mental health, yeah. not a behavioral issue. So throwing them in jail or prison only either exacerbates the issue or puts a lid on it until they're out. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's something that it, it creates a cycle. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, why do you think that is not prioritized? I'm curious, like your perspective, why do you think mental health and even with like your clients, just in general, why do you think mental health is not prioritized? Uh, I think in general, because it's stigmatized. Uh, I think people, um, uh, they, they, people like to perceive it as, a, oh, it's, it's a that person's issue, not a me issue. People are very uh, hesitant to attach themselves to the label of having a mental health problem. Like people go to the dentist, even though they don't have a cavity, mm-hmm. you'll go to the doctor, even though they don't have a broken bone just for normal checkups. Um, but the idea of just going to a, a therapist just for a checkup, the people like they, they, they would scoff that. They're like, I, I don't have a problem. Why would I go and, and, and talk to them? Mm-hmm. So in terms of a general sense in terms of not prioritizing i think it's just because it's stigmatized and people you know have a negative connotations for it um for my clients it's because fuck them Mm. um nobody cares about the mental health of a criminal Mm -hmm. um or a perceived criminal because all my clients are you know the less than the the disfavored the 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 least favorable in society so it's easy to say, 
oh, they just did that because they're a bad person, mm-hmm. not because, oh, no, they have problems and, and mental health issues that can de- get depressed, just like Susan does and her gated community. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I think in terms of my, my clients, the reason it's not prioritized is because fuck that. And, and people don't, in general, don't um, want to care about mental health of, of people that they perceive to be the dredges of society. Because mm-hmm. they, and I guess, perhaps think they don't deserve it, which mm-hmm. is, you know, kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So... I want to do something a little bit different with that. So let's say, because I'm not speaking for everybody, but let's just say, so for someone like myself who is um, outside of, we'll say, the courtroom or perceiving um, pretty much like all of the things that like, you know, the uh, person's done to obviously, you know, be there and whatnot. Um hearing it so like let's say this person did this and it's just like I know for me the first step is like okay like you told me that what this person did x y and z and sometimes it's it you know with life stuff sometimes it's a mix of like well I don't I don't know that person so I can't really say nothing or it's a mix of like well there's I'm like there's probably there's probably more to the story than what's being said you can't just say this that and the other and then also depends who's saying it huh like it also depends who's saying it right like who says they did xyz right it see that's the that's good right there so so my question to you is what would you say to those people we will say maybe like how i'm saying it in my shoes of like that's what they thought and they didn't take it any further it's like okay well uh, i don't know them or mm, i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure there's more to the story but okay, what would you say to a person like myself and others who kind of come at it at that angle of like, you know what I mean? If that makes sense. So you mean if like somebody else is accused of something and they're not sure if they did it? More so like in a in the sense of like making it um, aware, like making people aware of clients mental health so for someone outside okay, I of see the, what you're saying. yeah i see what you're saying how could you make other people aware? well i would say one way would just to be not be rushing to judgment in general number mm-hmm. one i think um number two would, would would be to kind of and I guess it would be kind of hard because it, it, it bucks a lot of our, 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 our norms in terms of our thinking, but mm-hmm. kind of break away of the thinking that that it would be a, min- a minority incident mm-hmm. that this person has a mental health problem. You know what I mean? Like break away from the, from the thought that less people than not are having mental health issues because that's that's likely not the issue like if you come up on 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 an issue it it should be for maybe not first but up there with huh i wonder like if there's anything else going on here and then from there go to okay maybe it's attributable to a behavioral issue or this person just sucks um you know what i mean but (laughs) I, i i think you know it it should be it should be considered much more so um first rather than oh no like it, it's one of those things that like people like they think of like you know the classic one is like an insanity defense right mm-hmm. but like there, there's more two things than just that there's not just you know someone was insane there's you know someone could have you know have ptsd and 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 have things that you know like set them off they could uh you know have schizophrenia and and you know i guess that would be more i guess akin to the, the, you know this um the normal um sending defense but there's a lot of other um ones like you know they could have you know um, learning disabilities that prevent them from just really grasping things like i had a, a client one time where um he he was he was given no contact order meaning he wasn't allowed to um contact his um 
believe it was his fiance. It was fiance, and they, and they also had, I believe, one if not two daughters together. And the reason, like he 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 wasn't accused of, of doing anything violent to her or towards her. Um, he was accused of essentially doing a crime, like in her presence, basically. Um, and it's, it was kind of like a weird loophole. But anyways, um, he was he was given the no contact order, and he and he violated it because. And when you talk to him, like he doesn't he doesn't perceive as, and this is you know the the very. Um, politically incorrect um, example I give, but he, he presents well, like he's not in the corner licking paint, you know what I mean? And because of that, you know, they go, oh, because they get like exactly what this no contact order means and even though like to, to most people it's like well how could you need to be explained a no contact order is well i know but i didn't talk to her about my case and and he legitimately like he wasn't joking like he wasn't you know being like sarcastic or smart ass he, he, he legitimately thought that well, no contact means no contact for purposes of the case, even though no one said that. He just kind of came up with that. Um, yeah. So, and, and you would just look at him and my point is you wouldn't be able to look at him and know that. So I guess it would be to kind of maybe take that into consideration first rather than thinking that it's a, um, it's a rarity for somebody to have one of those. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so... And correct me is so you would say basically don't be quick to judge, but instead, you know, they go a little bit deeper instead of just um, automatically assuming this and then that, you know, the minority is they have these, you know, mental health. Okay. Okay. And so thank you for that. And then my question is to you as well is so you're working with a lot of different clients. Um, so we'll say male and female. Do you notice yep. that there is a, what's the word I'm looking for? A difference or not compassion, not a response, but- Can you repeat that? Sorry. The last thing I heard you say was, um, sorry. The last thing I heard you say was you work with both male and female clients and then it cut out for a second. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. It's no problem. So you work with both male and female clients. So yeah. my question um, is, do you notice that, I wouldn't say like more favoritism or, res- or receptive. I'm trying to find the right word for this, but do you do you notice that there's more um, absolutely sympathy with th- those absolutely. who are, okay, you already know what I'm about to say then, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Like when I, when I have a, when I have like, you know, uh, a sweet looking, you know, petite, uh, soft spoken girl. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I know I'm going to be able to get her a much lesser sentence than I can, you know, a big, you know, jacked guy with tattoos and, you know, what have you. Like, it's just that 110%, 110%. Um, and, and, and that, the, the whole, that, that, I mean, that's why the public defender, that's why we have a, um, um, uh, a, a clothing bank for, for trial mm-hmm. for, for people that are either in custody or that just don't have poor clothes because and then all the we're like, no, man, I don't want to wear your stupid shit. Like I, I'm going to wear whatever I want. And that's fine. Like we don't make them, but mm-hmm. it's, like, at the end of the day, like it, it's, it's optics really does matter. Like these, like at the end of the day, like you know, the, they're the judges and like, they're supposed to be following the law. And, and, and oftentimes if it's a jury trial, you know, they're supposed to follow the law, but they're, they're jurors. They don't, they don't, they're people. At the end of the day, they're, if they, if they look like, if they like you or if you give them, or, you know, if you look presentable, they're going to be less harsh. I mean, it is what it is. So yes, a hundred percent, all of that plays a role. Um, I definitely notice um, less harsh punishments for, um, you know, women, um, for certain types of charges, um, um, they're given the benefit of doubt much more in batteries, especially against men. Um, they're given the benefit of the doubt oftentimes in, um, like in drug charges, they're, they're much more likely to get, you know, a diversion or, or some sort of, um, you know, sentence that includes, you know, treatment or, you know, something like that, where men oftentimes are, you're getting, you're getting prisoner jail. 
Mm -hmm. So yes, I definitely have noticed and seen that plays um, a role. Got you. So how, how would you say, so in your role, how would you say, because this is obviously just, you can see is perceived and stuff. How do you personally come at working with your client? So male in the male case and in the female case, how do like, do does your style kind of change up a little bit? Do you like, what's that like knowing what they're going to be facing because they're male or female? How do you come at it? Um, I know each case is different, but no, you know. each, each case is different. And I, I, I try not to really like think about that necessarily too much, but it, I mean, for, I mean, I will take certain things into consideration. Like if, if a, if a particular person, like I can tell they have like a really crappy, you know, past in terms of um, juvenile history and things like that, uh, I'll try to, you know, prep myself for this person's likely not going to trust me for very valid reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm certainly harsher, I would say maybe with guys, but mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed that they tend to, what's the word? Uh, chest puff for lack of a better word, more in that, uh, I mean, certain, certain male clients who have been in the system will believe because they've had a number of run-ins in with the law that, man, I know the system better than you. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, I mean, you don't, you don't. I mean, you, you probably <laughs> have more firsthand experience perhaps, but you, you don't know the law better. Right. Um, that's like saying, like, just because, you know, you go to McDonald's every day, you know, like you, you're like the master employee, you know how to cook everything. And like their secret formula, you know, you just like fucking burgers a lot. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> not the same dude. Love it. Um, so he, so, so things, so situations like that, I mean, I've, I've had multiple male clients. I mean, uh, to be clear, I've never had a woman client, uh, physically challenge me, um, okay. Or, or try to um, get aggressive with me. Yeah. I, I have had very difficult female clients, to be clear. Um, very, very difficult ones. Um, but the, 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 the male clients, that are it, it's, it's kind of like a, 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 a pre, just, it, it's something that's like, if you nip in the bud early on, it, we're fine for the rest of the thing. So, Oftentimes it's, it's just, listen, man, I'm not going to like bow down to your, to your, you know, uh, your, I guess, intimidation tactics for lack of a better word, because they also like, listen, you're, you're my public defender. You have to do what I say. And it's like, well, not really. Yeah. Um, you definitely have a very, very big say in how we do things, but there are certain decisions that are up to the attorney. And also I'm doing this for free. Yeah. So you can't really like order me to do things. <laughs> um, which is oftentimes um uh has happened um, yeah. um and i've had clients you know i've had it, it is what it is and i but i do always try to take into consideration that by the time they've been, they've gotten to me they're they're pretty pissed and, and likely for good reasons right like <laughs> whatever happened happened and either they did it or they did it right and if they did it they might think they have a good reason if they did it and if they didn't do it at all you know, they're really pissed that they're there. The cop didn't listen to them. Um, you know, they've gone to first appearance. The judge didn't listen to them. So now they're, now they're with me. Possibly they got, you know, transferred to one or two different public defenders because of, you know, messed up paperwork. So by the time I, I have them, they're, they're, they're pissed. And I, and I get it. And they're like, you know, nobody gives a shit. Um, so, but, you know, I've had a few clients, uh, you know, say like, you know, I'll beat your ass or I'll get my so-and-so, uh, family member to beat your ass and da da da, da and uh generally a, 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 a quick you know listen man don't let the suit fool you is, is enough to you know check that and then we're good for the rest of the time because you know they're they're not expecting that they're they're expecting you know like most uh, you know public defenders are like, oh okay i'm sorry whatever you say um but when i don't um they kind of for the most part you know back down it's because it, and then also because I, I do try to show that like i like 
I, I do care. And like, I'm trying to work on your case and like, you can act like you're a bitch and tough guy all you want. I don't really care, but mm -hmm. I'm still going to try to work on your case. So I've never had to do that um, yeah. with um, a, a woman client, nor I don't think would I, <laughs> but um, I, I guess to answer your question, I, 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 in those scenarios, sure, I would probably treat them harsher, but um, across the board, no. I, and, and, I, and I certainly don't try to play favorites in terms of working harder on, you know, female or woman cases or, you know, cases involving, you know, a, a man client. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. Which... So you answered that like awesomely. And that actually leads into like the next thing I wanted to ask you. Cause I know when we, uh, we first spoke on the train and stuff like that, you were telling me a little bit about like your background. So like how you were with the law, you know, growing up and then like yeah. now you're on this side of the law. So like talk a little bit of like, let us know about that. Share with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, I guess the first time I knew I wanted to be a lawyer um, was after the first time I got arrested. <laughs> mm -hmm. So in high school was the first time I got like a, I would, I would call it a substantial arrest. Mm -hmm. um, when before, before I, I had like, I guess like run in with police, but never like an actual like arrest or anything like that. So um, in high school, um, got to a fight at a local I guess bar, restaurant thing or whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but uh, it was a place that like we would go like, you know, after like a party or something like that. So um, that happened, but it was horrible timing because it was literally three days after my 18th birthday. The officer literally looked at my ID and goes, damn son, three days ago, you'd be calling your mom. And I, you're going to jail. Damn. <laughs> I'm like, like you can still call my mom though. He's like he's like not nah, fam, you're going to jail. I'm like yeah. all right, bro, whatever. So um, anyway, so I'm, I'm I'm 18. I'm about to go off to uh, undergrad and uh, have all these plans and stuff. And like at the time, I'm thinking like, oh my god, my life's over. Uh, this is I'm so fucked. Like I, I'm not gonna be able to get to college. This is I'm I'm just so screwed. I'm gonna I'm like. What's my backup plan? Like, what am I going to do right now? I'm going to have to frick it. Uh, so I'm losing. Um, and then my buddy's dad um, represented me uh, in the criminal thing, in the criminal case. And now he is a civil attorney. Um, he, he doesn't handle um, criminal cases. He handles um, civil disputes. Like if somebody's um, suing somebody for something, mainly he does, well, he used to do a lot of medical malpractice claims, and now recently he's been doing um, a lot of, um, um, like if you have uh, like a claim on your house and like the insurance company won't pay. But anyways, he took my case um, kind of as a favor to me because um, I was best friends with his son. Okay. And he's a very kind of like brash, rough around the edges guy that you at least in my mind you'd never expect to be a lawyer he was um just not like when I, my picture of a lawyer growing up was like just some fat stuffy white guy with a pot belly and like nice shoes and like a nice watch and balding and like you know rich but a loser kind of damn so um i mean that's this was i mean <laughs> I, I just i didn't really like i didn't really like there wasn't shows like suits you know harvey specter and like you know the lincoln lawyer with fucking matthew mcconaughey like that wasn't like at least that's not at least when i growing up it wasn't really like you know portrayed like that yeah um so it, that just wasn't what i thought so um my my buddy's dad however was kind of really broke that mold for me he um was he had gotten in trouble when he was younger he was you know like i said like this rough you know around the edges guy and he i'll never forget like he like and like looking back on it, it was a very kind of like minor case because like i didn't like beat the hell out of the kid or anything like i punched the kid one time and like it was stupid yeah. but he he got it thrown out and i, I just remember he it didn't go to trial or anything like it got i forgot what happened i think i had to pay like a fine and it got like dismissed or whatever but I, I remember like him going over like the trial prep with me in terms of like what he was going to do in trial, like because there was some like witness statements that like 
certain people made to the police that like absolute bullshit. And like, I just remember him telling me like how like he was going to, you know, cross examine this witness or introduce this or just being like completely enamored with it and being like, damn, that's kind of sick. Like I would love to be able to do that. Um, And then, so when he got me off, like, and I remember like, I was like, wait, I don't, I don't have to do anything else. He's like, no, you're good. I'm like, well, what about when I apply for school? He's like, no, dude, it's off your record. Like, you're fine. I'm like, what? And like, he acted like there was so non. I was like, you've like given me another chance at life. Like, I can't believe this. Like, oh my God. Like, you know, in hindsight, it really wasn't that big a deal. But then at that moment, I thought it was like, oh my gosh, like, I, you know, I got my life back. I can, I can do something again. Like, I thought I was going to, you know, be, you know, like a convicted felon or something like that. And um, afterwards, I remember like, damn, like, I would like to do that for someone also in terms of like, you know, in their, you know, shittiest time, be like, nah, man, I got you and this is going to be okay. We're going to get through it and, you know, give them, you know, maybe not another shot at life, but at least uh, another chance when they otherwise thought that, you know, the case would be, you know, the end all be all for them. So after that experience, I was like, all right, yeah, for sure. Definitely want to um, be a lawyer. And then in terms of what drove me to be a public defender, second time I got arrested, <laughs> was up in uh, undergrad, I was uh, just I guess not quite done with uh, the whole getting arrested. <laughs> so, something about it was a little fun. Something about it. I was like, you know, that first time was like, not so great, but you know, maybe I just didn't do it right. Let me try it one you know, time. Like, try this. We'll, we'll try it again. So we try tried it this. again in, um, <laughs> in undergrad. And uh-huh. the, 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 main, the main crux, like it was so, I was in a fraternity and they came over to our house and like fucked up our mailbox or whatever. So then a few nights later, um, it was like graduation. I wasn't graduating, but like some friends of mine were graduating and um, they were like, hey, for graduation, um, we're going to their uh, fraternity house and then we're going to mess up their mailbox with like a, you know, last like who robbed Frank Baxter. And we're like, all right, that'd be, that sounds great. I'm, I'm on board. Let's do that. So we go. Doors wide open. Um, get on mailbox because we're dumb and drunk. Um, and so instead, we're like walking around and we're like, oh, you know, it'd be really, really funny if we spray fire extinguisher all over the place. So... We grabbed the fire extinguisher and sprayed it all over the place. And being drunk, thought it was the funniest thing that has ever happened. So naturally, we got another fire extinguisher and sprayed that in two. And then got one more and sprayed that in two because, like, this was the funniest thing we've ever seen in our life at that time. At that time. So we, uh, we left, walked out the front door, thought nothing of it. And we're like, yo, this is, this is great. This is, you know, mission accomplished. So... <laughs> Pet on yeah, the I'm, I'm, I'm thinking up and up. I like, forgot about it. I was like, oh, you know, we did that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. So uh, about, I don't know, three days later, I get a call from my fraternity president. And I know that's a problem because they're not never calling me for nothing. So I was like, this is not good. I'm like, well, what's going on? They're like, are you in Tallahassee? Because I went to Florida State. And I'm like, yeah. They're like, maybe you should, you should not be here. Damn. I'm like, what do you what do you mean not be here? They're like, you should like go home. I'm like, what you, this is this is during the summertime. Because like it was, you know, the end of the semester. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, what he's like, dude, the cops are here like looking for you. Like, you need to go home. I'm like, well, number one, what'd you tell them? They're like, dude, we told them that you're not here. I'm like, oh dude, my dog, appreciate you. Uh, and then number two, why are they here? Like, what did I do? I like, it, it legitimately didn't immediately pop into my head. Like, you would think that, like, oh, what was the last thing you fucking did? And it just it didn't pop in my head. I was like, oh, I wonder, like, why what, what did I do? Like, what, what? what could it be? What could it be? Um, and they're like, dude, like, somehow, like, they know you broke into the fraternity house and like sprayed the fire extinguisher. So I'm like, how do they know that? Like, no way. I'm like, and so at first I didn't say anything. I'm like, so how do they know it's me? And they're like, bro. Yeah. I'm like, this is not good. Mm-mm. This is not good. So the best part about this is at the time, I'm interning at a criminal defense firm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, re- a really good criminal defense firm, actually. Um, and I have to call them and be like, hey, guys, you know that like thing we do for other people? Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and need a little bit of that. Oh, my God. I'm like, dude, what the hell? Um, Come to find out that the prosecutor, number one, was a former um, member of that fraternity at that uh, college. Your Um, luck was Huge public of interest. And (laughs) looking back on it, um, something should have been done to remove them, likely. Um, Mm -hmm. But whatever. It's not a hair nor there. Um, Also, so, 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 also, they... They waited, like I said, it was three days later, we get the call from the cops. They didn't mm. report it the day after. They waited three days later because in between that time, they had a, a, their biggest party of the year. Um, and this is a big ass party. Like Ying Yang twins were there, like fucking Dan was there. And like, it was a big ass like pop party. So naturally, a lot of people were there. Naturally, a lot of things got broken. Everything that got broken at the party, they said, Oh yeah, those motherfuckers did that. Damn. So we got hit with felony destruction of all that property, uh, breaking and entering, even though the door was open, which is a felony, mm-hmm. and then felony theft of a fire extinguisher, even though we didn't take it away, we just used it all. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. statute says uh, theft is uh, temporarily or permanently depriving the owner of its use. So yeah, technically they can't use it anymore uh, unless they wanted to like hit people with it i was going um, to say beat someone with it uh-huh. but so that's three felonies um that's a problemo mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the most part um and i didn't have any other real criminal history other than like my thing in high school uh yeah. but uh so they're like all right man you're gonna have to be on this like super wild probation for like three years and i'm like damn all right sounds good um sure let's do that uh about a year let's say seven months into that um i get pulled over for uh a dui um take it to trial it gets dismissed the dui because the court found that the officer had no probable cause to even pull me over like i wasn't speeding i didn't run a stop sign i didn't swerve i didn't uh, break excessively. I didn't like. There's no. There's no reason to pull me over. Basically, so the so the, the they threw that. Out. But the the court looked at the probable cause affidavit, the police report, and they're like, "Wow, oh, what time were you driving? Ten o'clock? Oh, fam, your curfew says you're supposed to be in by nine. Damn. That's a violation of probation." Damn. So then they go you're going to be a convicted felon because you violated probation. I'm like, dude, what? Like, are you, I was driving. Give me a, bro- what? come on. <laughs> um, so they go, all right, this is what we're going to do. Because my um, attorney, like I said, the guy that I was interning for was like, listen, man, get this guy a break. He's trying to go to law school because I still wanted to be, you know, a lawyer. I still not necessarily a public defender, but still want to be a lawyer. Yeah. So I, uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, he wants to go to law school. So what's what we'll do? We'll do give him adjudication withheld, meaning I'm not convicted um, of the crime. I pled guilty, but not convicted of a of a felony. In exchange for nine months in jail. I'm like, oh. dude, nine months? Like, and this is around right around the same time as Brock Turner, which was the Stanford swimmer who was caught sodomizing the girl behind the uh, dumpster at Stanford. Like, oh. it wasn't like a, whether or not he did this. It was, he was caught because two other guys that were at the party followed him, saw what he was doing, like, grabbed him, beat him up, held him down until the cops came. Um, and he was given three months in jail. He ultimately served, I think, two or just under two. Hmm. Um, and I remember being like, wait, wait, wait. I didn't sodomize anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm getting three times what this motherfucker got. And the reasoning that the judge gave him to the light sentence was because the judge said he didn't want to irreprehensibly damage the young man's future because he made a momentarily lapse of judgment. And it's like, dude, you, what about this girl who's like irreprehensibly fucked up now mm-hmm. because of this 
fucking guy. And he's getting three, like a third of, of what I'm getting. Yeah. Um, but I was like, all right, man, if that's what we're doing, if I, you know, let's, let's fucking run it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm there and I'm doing my thing. And it's fucking sucks ass. And eventually I start to realize and I'm like talking with these guys because I'm there for a fucking long that fuck man. And when you really like listen to their story about like how they grew up and like what like they had to go through and shit, it's like fuck man, like how like where else did anybody expect to end up? And I don't and I mean that in like the most sincere is is the wrong word but it, it's it's i don't mean that as pejorative i don't mean that in, in like in a negative like uh, context i mean like when you have that much working against you when you started out life with that much shit like holding you down like like weighing you down like how would how would you expect that person to, to be anywhere but like broken and messed up and 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 likely in jail yeah um and then i looked at myself and it was like well shit motherfucker you do know right from wrong mm -hmm. you did have a really good dad growing up that taught you how to not be a jackass what's your excuse because you're in the exact same place that these people are yeah um so that's when i was like damn i guess it's probably thunder i guess i'll do that because <laughs> These people, uh, that, that, that's one thing that, so that I really, really kind of like, it stuck with me in there was that, so they fucked up my paperwork, um, as they often do, because people that work in jail are like the dumbest people in the world for whatever freaking reason. Um, but they messed up my paperwork and put me in the PBL pod for my first two months. PBL stands for punishable by life. Oh. Um, so these were all the people that were getting ready to go to prison for, um, up to life, but oftentimes like 20 years and up. Mm. And even when I was in that pod, because, you know, that, that's, that's the, the technically the worst of the people in jail or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even when I was in that pod, it, it and, and, I'm, and I'm absolutely not making excuses for anybody in there, but it, it was, there was very few people in terms of that I came into contact with that had done what they had done simply because they were a bad person. Now, they absolutely all made terrible decisions, yeah. but it was oftentimes never, or not never, it was, it was oftentimes not as simple as, oh, that's just a bad fucking person. Like, that's why they did that. Like, they're just a piece of shit. It, it, it just, and it, it was even, even in like, even in that pod, even with the pod where it was like, oh, those guys are about to go away for a long time. So like, yeah, lock them up, go away. Even them, when you would like listen to it, it was like, yeah, they did X, Y, Z, but it, and again, this isn't to say that it, it justifies necessarily or absolves them of it or, or, you know, you know, they should be allowed to do it because they had a bad upbringing or anything like that. But it, 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 I, I, it really stuck with me that like for, for almost everybody that's committing a crime or what, it, it's not for the most part, simply because they're a really bad person. Um, so, hmm. and, 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 and like, for me, I don't consider myself a really terrible bad person, but mine was certainly not a crime of necessity. I, I certainly didn't commit my crimes because I had two or three kids at home that I needed to help feed or I had a sick parent at home that I needed to take care of, or I, I just, you know, never had the means to get good education. So this is the only way I know how to make a living. Like that wasn't my situation. Yeah. I committed my crime because I was dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which, I mean, that, I mean, that's not like the worst reason to commit one, but it's certainly not a good reason. Yeah. Um, so, but that, that's when it really stuck with me that, all right, man, you got to help these people because it's not like everybody's just a piece of shit out here fucking up. Mm, okay, okay. I mean, that's huge, though. I mean, like, listening to everything, like, it's kind of like, though, you know, with the decisions that, you know, happen and stuff like that, um, it just kind of, like, 
shaped you to where you are now like where you were able to kind of get both of those sides of like though like how you just said like you know your your decisions you know those moments were not like these other people who had you know lifetime of fighting whereas yours you know it gave you a bit of a taste of um being able to sit with these people you know a bit and listen to their stories to where it shaped you to actually like help these people so it's like you you have that experience but you also have like that connection to those people when because you 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 you've been you've been where they sat at and though the sentences were different and stuff like that you still have that connection where it's not like you're on the other side of the fence and you're oh you're a goody two shoes you never did anything wrong it's like no i made you know some decisions and it, it got me here but you know what i mean it shaped you so um I mean, that's just like hearing your story with it and just like, just like your background, just with things and just even decisions, like how it just comes down to just like, you know, these little decisions or how, you know, they play a big impact or, you know, just for everybody. And then those who their life is just different, you know? Um, Absolutely. Which, Absolutely. I mean, there's so much talent mm-hmm. in, and I, I it's, it, it's, it sounds like a cliche, Mm-hmm. But the amount of talent that is in any any given county jail is astounding, yeah. and 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 I I don't mean that I, I don't I, I cannot overstate that mm-hmm. in terms of the these like I saw like the most incredible artists like the most in, in innovative people that could be easily engineers. I mean, th- th- just so much unrealized potential, so much untapped talent in there um, that was just like, it was like, God, like if, if you were given, if you just had a, a different upbringing, if you were born in, into it, like in a different neighborhood, like just a, a different like school zone over, yeah. what, would, what would be? Yeah. Okay. I see that which that as you said that 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 made me think of um I I cannot say exactly where exactly the place was or what country but um I was speaking with someone I know it could have been someone that was on the podcast but basically they were saying like how how we have jails here like in our country like you did something wrong you're screwed you're in there for years versus um where they're at if you're in jail, it's not like, oh, you're thrown away and you're you're a horrible person. It's like something happened. Let us help you become a better person and help better, like make better choices. So though you're in here, we're right. going to teach you these life skills or we're going to teach you how to cope with your anger or whatever it is. So sure. it's kind of like that difference in you're locked away because you made this decision. Right. So now you're you're stuck with that forever um versus well, there's been punishment and rehabilitation right yeah 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 thank you thank you <laughs> so like yeah like what are your what are your thoughts on that like do you think so there you go. Oh, it, it kills me because i on paper um mm-hmm. our our criminal system justice system is all about rehabilitation um it's 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 all over i mean you know we we rehabilitate you know people and, and prevent recidivism and blah 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 it's it's not it's 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 it is an absolute lie i mean uh, our our criminal justice system is in no way set up to rehabilitate it's 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 set up to punish mm-hmm. and and to keep you in the system once once you're in it it's designed to keep you in the system because it, it they, they can make money off you quite frankly, yeah. um, but this is one end. But the other end is because once you're tagged, once you're given that, you know, moniker of, oh, they're a criminal, they want to keep you in the system because they want to keep you away from society, off the streets. Like the idea is, you know, if you've committed this one crime one time, well, then you're, the, you're a piece of shit. And you're a horrible person. And you shouldn't be in society for the rest of your life. When it's like, come on, man. Like, yeah. The only, I mean... One, one thing I've always said is, you know, because people will say, how, how do you defend criminals? Yeah. 
Yeah. And and it's, you know, there, there's a hundred different ways I could go about that. But uh-huh. recently I've, I've gone with, you know, the only difference between my client and you is they got coffee. Bit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And every single person, I don't care who you, I don't care if you're a nun. I don't care if it's your grandma. I don't care if it's your mom. Everybody's committed to crime. Everybody's committed multiple crimes unknowingly or not. Yeah. And the only reason they're not my client is because they can afford a different attorney Mm -hmm. or they didn't get caught. That's it. So uh, how how can I get out out of my face with that? Yeah, that's true. Because if you get in trouble or if your son gets in trouble, if your daughter gets in trouble, you're going to be like, oh, please, can you you help him? You're you're such a good kid. You just made one mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, but all my clients are, are what? Collective mistakes? Damn. Yeah. There is a huge gap with that. So let me ask you, what do you think is your solution to just like fix some of these things or, or, or to start oh, fixing some man. of these things? Oh. <laughs> Did I open something up here? <laughs> right. I mean, there, there's just, we, we need like 15 podcasts for that, but <laughs> I mean, one, one, one thing. All right. So one, one, one huge thing is uh, mandatory uh, sentencing guidelines, right? Um, those are uh, 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 huge. So I just recently got um, promoted from county court, which is misdemeanors to felony. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're in felony, um, you, you realize very quickly that the score sheet is what runs everything. Mm-hmm. You don't, you have kind of very limited limited negotiating and bargaining power once a score sheet is in play what a score sheet is essentially your criminal record your criminal record for the most part only really matters for felonies misdemeanors don't really matter for the most part again this isn't you know concrete rules you know here but by and large the only thing that matters is um certain misdemeanors um if you have like enough of them and stuff but for the most part just felonies um, so when you get them, it, um, they accumulate onto your score sheet and they're worth points. Um, when each felony is worth X amount of points for, you know, if it's, you know, especially violent or, you know, if it involves, a you know, uh, you know, a lot of damage or whatever, whatever. So yeah. when you have X amount of points, right, that that's what drives the minimum, the minimum that the judge can sentence you to. For instance, if you've been arrested, uh, you know, for, let's say you got, you had a string of burglaries when you were younger, right? You had, you had uh, three burglars. And now you score your sentencing guidelines, your, your, your score sheet is, um, let's say, 60 months, right? A- a- accumulated 60 months, right? That's what, that's what your score sheet says in terms of the amount of points you have accumulated, right? Mm-hmm. And you've been clean and you've, and you've changed your life and you, you know, completely, uh, you know, turned everything around and you're a new person and, and all of that, right? And, and you've been clean for eight years. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't come near a cop, right? Mm-hmm. Then finally, out of nowhere, COVID hits and you're a small business owner and you apply for a PPE loan and you know, whatever, whatever you get. Well, it turns out you filled out the paperwork wrong and it looks like you committed fraud on the government, hmm. right? You didn't mean to, but technically it was a crime because you, you filled out the PPE paperwork wrong. Mm-hmm. Normally, if it was your first offense, that would be a slap on the wrist. No big deal. You're out of here because of that score sheet. If you were to go to trial and lose and be convicted, you would have to be, have to, the judge would not be able to sentence you less than those 60 months. So then it's whatever the prosecutor wants to offer. Prosecutor says, yo, it's going to be fucking four years. Mm. Four years has got to be, unless you want to take it to trial, because if you do take it to trial, the minimum they can sentence you to is those 60 months. Mm -hmm. So it's, it it takes away the discretion from the judge to say, Hey, I know 
you know, he's done X, Y, Z in the past, but he has changed. She has changed. They are new people now. They're now, you know, pillars of the community. They're doing X, Y, Z. They've helped other people. You know, maybe they just had like a, 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 a relapse because they, you know, they've just, you know, when, when, if you're a lifelong addict, you're a lifelong addict. Sometimes, you know, you're gonna have a misstep here or there or what have you. Um, it then it, it kind of locks you in basically for life that if you have another misstep ever again, you're fucked. Um, so that the, the, the mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines um, has really, really kind of driven people getting these exorbitantly high sentences for like things like marijuana possession and, um, you know, minor marijuana cells and, and, and just drug possession in general. Um, and when you hear about these people getting, you know, 30 years and, you know, taking a plea for 30 years, it's because, well, yeah, they scored a hundred years on their sentencing guideline because of past BS. Yeah. Um, so it's it's one getting rid of uh, mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines would would be one would be would be a big step towards at least uh, 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 it would it would be a step away from the lock them up and throw away the key mentality, which has put us in a spot where we have the highest incarcerated rate, you know, um, you know, of any uh, first world country. I mean, we, we, I mean, I forgot the statistic was, but we, I think we have like, I don't, it's, it, it's not 50, it's close to 50% of like the world's freaking entire prim, uh, criminal population. Like the amount of people we house in, in our prisons is, 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 ungodly like it's ridiculous how many people we have and then it's not because we have more criminals i mean that is certainly not the case mm -hmm. but so getting ready to mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines would be one of them which is going to it, it likely would never happen because it would need to be changed by lawmakers legislators and what politician wants to run on the platform of oh let's let's help out criminals mm. you know what i mean yeah. because that's the label even though like i said the only difference between a criminal and, you know, whoever else is whether or not you got caught. Yeah, that puts a lot of stuff in perspective. Just like you said, like, you never got caught. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I haven't done nothing crazy, but like, yeah. I mean, when it comes to like driving sometimes, you know. Sure. It's just like, yeah, about yeah. this stop sign. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> about That's, this I red mean, light. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's 100%. Yeah. I mean, great. And, and everything within reason, right? Not everybody's, you know, you know, right, right. Shot right. somebody or something or what have you, but uh, everybody's done something that would likely warrant a criminal charge. Um, you know, and they probably done it more than once. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's big though. Like, just like, that perspective like how you said like the only difference between my clients and you is you just like you didn't get caught and it's just like damn <laughs> okay okay so that's one solution okay all right so no nah, thanks for that and then absolutely write your legislators uh ladies and gentlemen <laughs> get rid of mandatory minimum sentencing guidelines oh my gosh yeah like you, you like you said I, I can i can tell like you said you can you can use like we need podcast episodes oh like, dude we need we need so much time for that like, it's just... <laughs> No, I feel, uh, I feel you. I feel you. Which kills so, me. <laughs> so I do want to switch it actually to more so focused on you now. Though you did, okay. but I do want to focus it more on you. Like just kind of how we talked about just like with mental health and just <laughs> um just a variety of stuff, but you as the public defender. So you know, outside of that, so yeah, outside of that. Like just a few questions for you. So like the first one is like, what is it that you personally do to maintain like your mental health? So number one, mm -hmm. um, I have to work out multiple kind of different like outlets of that. I, mean, I work out like a gym every day. At least I try to if, if, I, if, I, if I, as long as I can. Um, I box with my friend um, at least... No, it's twice a week. Um, and then on Saturdays, um, I play basketball with a few um, public defenders, um, a couple of state attorneys and some private um, criminal defense attorneys. So that that by itself 
um, is a big stress relief in terms of um, like, it's huge. It's huge. Like, I mean, I, I have to, you know, go in the gym, like after um, a, a long day, it's, it's just like, it's like the one, like the gym is like the one change where like the one, nobody can get to me. Like, it's like, I can turn my phone off and like, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's one of those universal excuses that like, sorry, I didn't get your calls in the gym. And like, everybody gets it. It's like, it's nobody can contact me. Nobody can get to me. I don't have to be thinking about work because I'm the type that I'm, I always am thinking about work. Like it's, 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 I, I wouldn't say I'm a workaholic, but like, I mean, I have 200 fucking clients. So like, there's always something going on. There's always a fire to put out. There's always somebody's violating probation. Somebody's needs this. Somebody needs that. Somebody's this or this or this. And I'm, um, in terms of mental health, I'm extremely ADHD. So like, I'm very, very, like even when I'm sitting down, you know, watching TV, I'm, I'm thinking about four or five different clients and what issues is probably happening and what, you know, fires I'm likely going to have to put out. Um, so the working out is, is, is huge, number one. Um, unfortunately, and this was, I learned this in undergrad, actually. Um, lawyers are, I believe, number one, if not number two. Um, and this was back in 2000 and. 16, 15, no, 13 or 14. This is back when this study came out, but um, they're amongst, they're the top for um, alcohol addiction, substance abuse, depression, and um, I think it was suicide rate also. Um, Cause it's, we, we, it is a very, very uh, high stress environment in general to be a lawyer. It's very, very um, uh, uh, performance driven um, in terms of, you know, it, 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 and it's it's a very judgy profession, I would say. Yeah. Um, pe people are very um, even even though you know people think, oh, you're a lawyer, like you must be smart. There, it is. It's very very. Uh, I mean, everybody knows they're like shitty lawyers. You know what I mean? So it's not it's they're not just all across the board um, that great. It, it, so it's, it's, and, and everybody's very, everybody's, most people are lawyer, fancy themselves, you know, uh, you know, smart for the most part. They, they, they are want to be perceived as that oftentimes. So it, it's, it's a very high stress, high expectation, um, I guess, profession. And if you give a shit about your clients, there's that too. Yeah. Um, so, the working out is one of them. Number one, um, I try not to be in the top percent in terms of alcohol and substance abuse, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I definitely unwind and drink with my friends on the weekends. I mean, that's, that's absolutely, uh, huge. I mean, have to, um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else, what else? Hmm. I mean, I smoke, mm -hmm. I do smoke. Mm -hmm. um just in terms of like i said uh i i don't know if i would get to sleep at night um some nights just because it would just be constant um uh just thinking about the case is just constant like god man maybe i should get up and like you know write this motion maybe i should get up and like check on this maybe i should get up and like see you know where this person's you know if they got moved to a different like housing unit and it's like how that's messing up this or that um mm -hmm. and and honestly uh, a, a big one which is what i'm doing right now i don't know why it took me so long to kind of come to this one <laughs> it's probably my biggest one actually is is, is cooking um i'm uh a fat kid by by nature um really really was my whole life was was, was a fat kid mm -hmm. um so have a big affinity for food um and you know that kind of naturally went from an affinity for eating it for cooking it as well because it's like oh after you get to cook it you can eat it you fatty so um <laughs> I was, I was so for that um but i i really do i i, I love cooking um when I, uh, so I, you know, the routine is getting off work, you know, go to the gym, take a shower, whatever, and then cook whatever for dinner. And, uh, just the, the process of cooking, it, it gives me a, a, you know, like a task, but it's not super, you know, mind. I can kind of, you know, not want to say a mindless task because you can't kind of just go through the motions and you make something shitty or burn your house down. But, mm -hmm. um, 
it, it gives me a kind of like a release of, you know, completing a, a, a task without having to put too much mental strain into it um, and lets me kind of think about, you know, I do have to focus enough on it where I'm not messing up. So it kind of takes me away from, you know, constantly, you know, thinking about work. Um, so yeah, definitely cooking is, is, is oddly one of as well. Um, I know a lot of people that say uh, cooking stresses them out and they think it look at it as like a chore or something like that. But I'm very much of the thought that um, it's a huge stress relief. So, um, which is actually yeah. kind of funny. I, I got to say, by the way, guys, he actually has been cooking this entire episode. He, yeah, he yeah, hasn't told me what he's cooked yet, but he's been cooking, <laughs> he's been cooking this entire episode. So this is a new one. This is a new one. We have some cooking. <laughs> yeah. I've yet to, I, I didn't even see you eat nothing yet. So I take it it's not ready yet. <laughs> or no, it is, no, and no, you've been munching. Not. No, 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 definitely not. No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. We got a little bit of um, sausage and peppers tonight. You said sauteed peppers tonight? Sausage and sauteed peppers and onions. Oh, okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. Sure. Okay. Not Italian. So the, the Italian comes out in the cooking a lot. Yeah. Okay. Understood. That's what's up. That's what's up. I like it. I like it. I mean, it's like, yeah, I got to fix myself. That might, be, that might be another uh, fun fact. I might be the only half Italian, half Trinidadian uh, person you'll probably ever have on the podcast because wow. there's not that many yeah no it's definitely you're the first i i gotta <laughs> say uh, you're the first i, I, I would be i'll be shocked if you had another yeah i don't i mean never would have even got that combination like i never heard that combination in my life together wow yeah. italian and it's also a question i get uh a lot mm-hmm. which is this the straight up of, uh what are you which is a, a pretty abrasive question to ask somebody when you think about it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is funny. I can imagine no, I get that a lot though. Like I'll get that like by people I'm not even talking to. Like I'll be like in a like a crowd somewhere talking to like my friend, and like a stranger will come up and ask me that. I'm like, excuse me, like you 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 thought you were gonna just come up to a stranger that you don't know mm-hmm. and and ask them that? Like, yeah, what? What are you doing? Yeah. And why do you care that much? Yeah. I mean, I won't lie. I mean, I've never thought, what are you? But I'm like, he's mixed with something. Oh, no, no, for sure. No, I mean, there's, I I mean, I've certainly looked at people and been like, huh, I bet they're mixed. Wonder what it is. And then moved on. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) It's like, he's mixed with something. I don't know. But like how you said, it's literally just that. I'm like, okay. And then go right. from there. Go from there. That's, I mean, it would be the same, like, huh, that person's shoes are nice. I wonder where they got them from. And then moved on. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. You know, <laughs> that's kind of that. There are some people where, and this is just a me thing, like, I'll see someone and then, you know, if they look, like, I have to kind of catch it. Like, sometimes there are people I'll see and they'll look um, like um, Native, they'll look Native American to me, right? Mm, okay. No problem. Sure. You know, and it comes from like, oh, I wonder if this is someone from like my tribe. But I have oh, to kind of okay. like really, I see what you're saying. yeah, I have to. Catch it comes it. from a genuine like kind of like kinship thing, just trying to connect almost. Yeah, and then they're, yeah, they're like, oh no, like I'm from, and it's like you know Brazil or some other place, sure. and they have like the color. I'm like, okay, I can see it. I got now right. when you say it, but I'm like, yeah, we got some similarities. But I'm like, okay, cousin, okay, cousin, you know. Right. You know, I, I mean, I, I mean, have you have you been in a scenario where that has ever like you thought like offended anybody? No, I don't, I don't think it would. No, definitely not. Like I, because I'm the type I, I communicated. Like I would ask them, like, hey, like not to be weird, but are you Native American? The reason why I'm asking is because I noticed like they, and I'll say what it is. I, I, I'll see some type of print or some type of thing that they're wearing that kind of resembles tribal stuff. And they'll, okay. they'll like laugh. They're like, oh, no, 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 I'm so and so. There's like, but I see where you're coming from. I'm like, yeah, I just wanted to know. And then I end up learning more and like they'll tell me. So it's, it's always like a very, it's a door opener and it's like an educational experience each time, but never anyone like, how dare you? It's like, okay, good. Yeah. I mean, I'm also not terribly surprised because it would likely be hard for you to come across as offensive. Yeah. 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 
yeah for sure because i'm like i'm thinking in my head i'm like let me let me let me let me know my intentions of why i asked this as well why i asked this right as opposed to just what are you <laughs> yeah it's just it's a weird one man it's a it's a it's a jarring question and depending on like the mood you catch me in i might give you a dumb ass answer because <laughs> it's a, it, i mean it, it's it's a Without context, I mean, I, I know what they mean by this. I mean, I've been asked that enough times that like, I know what they mean. Yeah. But without context, it, it, it could be a hundred, like, what do you, like, I've literally, like, opened up my pants and been like, oh, I'm, looks like I'm still a guy. <laughs> like, oh, my mm, God. Guess, no. I guess, I mean, mystery solved. Mystery solved. I mean, you know, they, get, they get kind of irritated because, you know, well, that's not what I'm asking. Well, you, you. You were super specific. You said, "What am I?" Yeah, you should be a little bit. You should. You should be a little bit more specific there, though. I get that for sure. That's funny. And though. it kind of just kind of like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's my way of letting them know how abrasive a fucking question that is. Like, dude, what are you doing? Right now? Yeah. No, I get that for sure. I get that for sure. That's funny. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you. So next question: What's what does fun look like for you? That's a tough one. Ooh. That's a tough one. Someone not having fun? Someone's all, all work? No play? No, no, that's not true, but <laughs> that's how it's being perceived it's right now. <laughs> so I'm trying, you mean in terms of like fun for you. What I need to have fun or how I would define it. What is fun? So what is fun for for Wesley? What is what does Wesley do for fun? Anything active. Um and anything active, like uh, either you know, anything sport related, being outside, being mm-hmm. in the water. Yeah. I do like um anything in the water. Competition, I do like competition. That's fun. I like competing in things. Um, um, I like anything exciting. I wouldn't say necessarily like adrenaline driven, but nothing, but certainly anything exciting. Um, anything new. I'm a, I'm a big like, oh, that's me. That's cool. Okay. Um, but definitely big active stuff. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. All right. All right. So now I see he does have fun. Okay. So then next question is what's something you wish people knew about you? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Professionally? Uh, or um, more socially, like with friends. Give me both. How about that? <sighs> mm. Good. <laughs> I'm not trying to give you a bullshit one for either. Uh, I would say okay, so privately, mm-hmm. privately would be easier. Okay. Um, I would say I'm pretty tough on my friends. Um, okay. um, I'm certainly like a there for you type. Like I'm definitely not a like fuck you, bro. Like tighten up, uh, suck it up thing. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely there. Um, for them if they need something or what have you but i'm also like gonna call you on your shit um which is important and so i i, I guess it would I, I think it's known but i would i would hope or like that it's known that it always it's always coming from a uh, a, a place of you know like genuine you know concern or care for their well-being as opposed to just trying to be hard after a day yeah um professionally I 
especially that it might be the same thing for that. It might be the same thing for that. Uh, and when I, what I mean by that is I, I get passionate about um, representing my clients okay. and it can, it could, uh, I can easily see, I mean, it does, I know it does. It can come across as um, brash or uh, abrasive or um, confrontational um, when I'm dealing with the prosecutors. Um, I'm, I, I, I know it, it comes across that way. Um, I, I definitely, you know, put up a fight with everything. I mean, I, I do because yeah. um, I think it's important. Um, but I, I, I would like them to know or like it to be known that it's, it's coming from a place of genuine uh, concern, care, and trying to do the best job I can for the client rather than trying to fuck them over. Because there are a lot of attorneys that will do things for the sake of fucking over opposing counsel there's a lot of attorneys that do that that will just oh why are you filing that oh well because it's gonna it's gonna ruin their weekend or it's gonna give them something to have to do or it's gonna you know make them panic and it's like i i, I don't do that i would never do that um i don't um you know do things like that strategically to try to uh screw people over um i will fight tooth and nail um if it's you know to try to you know get the best result for my client if you know i you know really believe in you know whatever's going on um but it, it's not coming from a place of uh, malice or trying to fuck over the other side hmm. okay okay That's... even though i'm like diametrically opposed to everything they stand for <laughs> i just it, 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 despite that despite that it's despite not that. It's, it's, it, it genuinely really is not um ever for the for the for the purpose of and, and and when i say for i don't mean like for the most part it's for my clients and and i, I do get a little satisfaction out of it it's, it's i get nothing out of causing animus or animosity to the or, or grief to the other side it, it's nothing it's never about that it's only about trying to you know help up my clients um if, if and how i can okay okay understood okay i thank you for that and then the other question with that is, well, with you would be, if you could describe your inner world, what would that look like? Chaotic. Ooh, why so? Chaotic. Chaotic. <laughs> Cha chaotic as, as, as all hell. <laughs> I am, I am a, a walking, um, you know, um, you ever watch Charlie Brown? A little bit, a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I forgot his name um, exactly. Um, damn, I'm gonna have to look it up. So there's a, a character, I'm gonna look it up. I'm curious about this character. So there's this, there's this, okay. His name is Pigpen. And there's this character in, 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 in Charlie Brown. His name is Pigpen. And he's always dirty. That's, that's his thing. He's, he's like filthy ah, and dirty all the time. Okay. And he's like, everywhere he goes and walks, he's like followed by this like dirt, dust cloud that's like swirling around him at all times. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be my inner world. Interesting. Interesting. That, that would be it. Interesting. Just, just, just a, a, just a swirling chaos. Delio. I'm curious if you're open to shit. I'm just so curious. Why is that? I'm just so curious. Yeah, because there's it's because there's just so much going on. Like and and like I very rarely um, have a you know still moment or still thought. Mm -hmm. or, or I very rarely have a have a, a moment where my mind is still where I'm just you know thinking about or or or, or where I'm even thinking about one sole thing at a time mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of that stems from like you know I'm super very like I said I'm very very ADHD and I um do not like how Adderall um Ritalin Tira you name it I've been on it feels um so I don't take it for the most part 
Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, I, I, I think I've learned, um, to an extent anyway, kind of, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. cope otherwise, I mean, not cope, but, uh, you know, just function, you know, without it. Um, but because of that, it is still kind of a bit chaotic in terms of like my thinking and, and, um, you know, my internal, I guess, world for lack of a, I wouldn't say I'm ever like sitting there like at peace. Okay. Interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Which is not to say that I'm like, uh, you know, constantly like freaking out, but I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm never really at peace. That's the best way to put it, I guess. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. No, I get that. I get that. Like, do you ever, do you ever incorporate any like meditation or anything like that or breathing or anything like that? So, so my girlfriend has recently, when I say recently, I mean like three times gotten me to go to yoga mm-hmm. and I've never been against it. Yeah. I've never been like, oh, yoga is fucking lame or something for losers. Or anything. I've never like been against it. I just, never been gung-ho for it because i'm like I, like i get like i said i'm very very active into you know doing sports and you know sports. whatever it is outside and i'm just like I, I don't need to like do a lot of stretching like that's what i do before i do the thing i'm gonna do yeah um so i was just like dude what, what are we doing here mm-hmm. um but I, I i am very much I mean, I couldn't be more wrong in terms of there's there's so much more to it outside of just the stretching. Um, obviously, anybody who um, practices or does a lot of yoga is probably like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Like, you finally, like, arriving. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I very, very, very easily see the, the tangible benefits of it and um, would like to do it more. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. Right, well, thank you. No, I appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing that. Like, that's Absolutely. interesting. Okay. Well, so now we're getting, we're about close to like timing. So I did want to play, um, do, uh, I want to play a quick, it's a random game. Um, oh, okay. I see the peppers. Okay. Okay. Sorry. He's, he's showing me the food now, guys. He, he's been, he's been <laughs> cooking this whole time so i finally get to see some of the food okay it looks nice there you go okay i see you i see you that's what's up okay sausage it was today was a, a lazy day in terms of of cooking because it was a long one uh, like i said it's supposed to be a trial day but <laughs> it works out it works out not still way. buttered about it or anything damn damn no like, we can't tell <laughs> we can't tell nothing about that no 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 <laughs> Okay, okay. But no, I look good though. Look good. Um, all right. So, brand new game. So basically, I'm gonna give you five words. You might, you might be really good at this. Uh, so we'll see. I'm gonna give you five words, and you have, you have to tell me um, what comes to mind. So you have five seconds to answer each question. Sounds pretty easy. Yeah. All right. Let's go. All right. First word is kite. Benjamin Franklin. Okay. Second one, centipede. The mutant, that fucking movie, bro. The human centipede. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. Okay. Okay. It's more. <laughs> okay. Third one, mountain. <sighs> Two, one. How'd it go in here? You lost. You lost that one. Did you get it? Mm. Fourth one is blue. Crip. Crip. Okay. Okay. I kind of want to know. I want. I kind of want to know more on that. But okay, crip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why crip? <laughs> Uh, Snoop Dogg just popped into my head for whatever reason wearing like a bunch of blue shit. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Okay. Last one is Iceland. Great prison system. 
damn. <laughs> I see. Like, I see. literally like fucking like the model of what we should be fucking doing in this country. Like fucking take notes, you fucking Neanderthals. <laughs> That is a doing Iceland. Great prison system. Oh. <laughs> but it makes yeah, sense. Though. If anybody doesn't know about it, look it up and they'd, they'd be quite surprised. That could have been actually the one I was referring to. I don't even know. Someone was telling me about something. So I, I don't know. It could have been Iceland. I don't know. I don't know. But um, really, they, 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 theirs is uh, not to get too far back in what we we're talking about, but theirs is, theirs is much more rehabilitation driven rather than punishment driven. Mm. Which is why those are so much better than ours. Got you. Okay. 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 Hope you guys are hearing that, guys. Got to move <laughs> to Iceland. Okay. Okay. Well. Yeah, if you plan on putting me in a crime, definitely go to Iceland. Damn. Damn. <laughs> He's not saying go to Iceland to commit a crime, but I'm just it just happened to be there. It's, it's a better place to be than Russia and commit yeah. a crime. Ask, you know, Brittany Grinder. Yeah, yeah, go Russia. I don't know that. Immediately, I thought of Dark Cell. Never seen my family. Yeah, miss me with that. Man. Yeah, very much miss me with that. Like, do I even want to go? Yeah, no. Mm-mm. I'll be good. Good. Yeah, I'm okay with the picture. I'm okay with looking. Keep at moving. Picture. Yeah, Keep moving. very much so. We don't even got to go visit. We don't. Nah. nah. We don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, that's funny. But, okay, so, I mean, my man. You did very well. You did. You, you, you did you. that. You did that. You did that. Thank so, you, thank you. of course, and I know you since you're you, you're pretty much done cooking, but um, this pretty much kind of wraps the episode up. Do you have any? Do you have any questions or anything like that that comes to mind? Um, The worst thing you've heard about public defenders. The worst thing you say I've heard? Yeah. Um, I I really okay, let me have that wait. Uh, let me go, let me go back before I say that. Um I haven't I haven't really heard anything bad because it's like I, I guess I haven't been in the law world. The only thing okay. that comes to mind when I hear public defender is like when I would see like law and order S. I like guess for you and all those stuff and they're like sure if you you know can't like when they arrest them like if you don't have someone someone will be right. that's exactly. it that's that's the only thing that comes to mind when I think about like really no no negative um no no because no I, none I mean because like I said like the law world like you know in my mind I'm like because they're a lawyer, they're the same, right? But it, I guess not. I mean, I don't know, but that's what comes to my mind. It's like, I think, aren't you know, kind of doing the same, like helping you. But when I kind of looked into it a little bit, I'm like, okay, I see the difference between, you know, a public defender and a, a private, but I haven't heard anything. Like, I can't recall anyone saying, don't get a public defender or you're oh. screwed if you're doing this or um, they're X, Y, and Z. Um hmm. Now, cops, well, on the other hand, different. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. On the podcast. On the podcast. On the podcast. Well, that's good. That that's um, that's that gives me a little bit of hope that um, some people will at least give us a try. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad to hear that. I'm definitely glad to hear that. Yeah. No. Like for real. Like. Cause I, I think you told me some things, but like I literally, you know, like I've never heard anything negative or mm. don't do this. Like, of course, I hear the typical, like, oh, you know, um, I, I'm gonna call my lawyer, or I hear lawyer stuff, like, but okay, in my sure. mind, it's kind of the same because mm. this person's in trouble and someone needs to defend them. So I think, sure. you know. That's what comes to my mind, but yeah, nothing ever negative. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate it. Of course, my man. Of course, of course. Ah. What other questions you got? Um, let's see. Uh, 
Uh, what was your guess in terms of what I did before I told you I was a lawyer? Okay, so as my guess of like, what did you do? Yeah, job wise. Um, I know the suit probably gave it away a little bit. Well, see, that's the thing. I see a lot of people are different too. So it's like kind of in that's the true. business world. That's I, the point. Yeah, I would have. I, I didn't immediately go with, um, you know, public defender. I I mm-hmm. knew something. I'm like, he does something important, and <laughs> I knew the way your energy is. Like even when you speak, I'm like, he does something important, but I can also tell there's some like not stress. But there's some focus, like he he has a he has to have a serious demeanor, in some yeah. sense. Not, but it wasn't in a negative sense. So I'm like, I I can, I can see it. Like when I would first see you when you come off right. up the train, I'll see you, and then you know it's like in the I'm afternoon, here. a little different. Yeah, like all right, I'm here. I'm getting in the you, zone. You caught me a few times where like I'm going into trial, so I'm very much in like yeah, you're in that right. zone. This is like oh, yeah. That's so like have a fantastic day. You're like, thank you. I'm like, like thank you. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep Move it. it. Going. <laughs> and then like outside of that, like I see when you come back and you you're like, oh, dude, I've, I've done. Like I'm ready. You know what I mean? So I've seen that. So I'm like, it's it's something important. But um, I yeah, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't have went with that. But you did give me the hint later where, um. Like when I would see you and you're like, damn, dude, like it's hot. And like I had a, a walk and I'm like, where did you walk from? You're like the courthouse. And I'm like, and okay. it was kind of like, oh, okay, okay. So he does something. He, he goes to the courthouse. So that must be some, yeah. Right. So you kind of told, you, you told on yourself. But I got guess, it. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, that's that the thing. The shocker though is that one, me and you are literally like, me and you are literally at the same age. And then at the yeah, same wow. time, we went. We 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 have the same friend group. Well, you yep. know, mutual friends. I was like, yep. small world. Which is which is absolutely wild. Yeah. I would have never thought, yep. like, I'm like, what school did you go to? Who is like you have to know X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, why? And yep. I'm like looking at you, I'm like, you look familiar too. So yep. yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It is wild. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, it actually happened one time mm-hmm. where I've been on the right line. Yeah. And recognized. Bye, fine. Really? Was, I, was, I always thought it would be my worst fear. So I was like, man, what if they're not happy with whatever happened? Yeah. And so the person walks by and they're like, you look really familiar. And it was in the morning and I was like preparing for a trial. So I was kind of like, you know, in my mode. Yeah. But they're like, hey, you look really familiar. And I'm like, no, no. And it's like what I was doing. And just like, I wasn't trying to be rude, but I was, just, I was just like, you know, trying to like review my notes or whatever it was for the trial. Yeah, and then she walks back again. She's like, "Yeah, it's definitely, definitely you. You don't remember me, do you?" I'm mm-hmm. like, and then and then once once she once she said that, I was like, "I, I know what she's meaning." Yeah. So I was like, oh, I, "I hope I hope there's just <laughs> she's happy about whatever happened," <laughs> and like she she could see it on my face. Yeah. So before I could even say anything, she goes no don't worry like you it, everything worked out like i really appreciate it you helped me out a lot da, da, da. i was like oh, okay don't stab me <laughs> right like uh, i don't want to die here like yeah please please and there's no way to run on the fucking brain like, <laughs> I'm, I'm on this thing uh, oh my god but i knew right. worst case scenario my man my man thaddeus would uh we would tackle them and I'd be all right. Oh, bro, bet, bet, bet. You know, as long as in the front, I, I, in the train, I mean, I, I, I can't do nothing there. I ain't there. But if I was there, I got you. I got you. Got you. But the good news is, you know, nobody can't get on the train without weapons. So they, they can't get on with weapon size. So that is true. They are good about that. Yeah, they don't play about that at all. So that is, that is true. I saw somebody today actually they tried to bring like, he was a big ass butter knife, to be clear. Like it wasn't, Mm. point yeah but they were like fam what are you doing yeah yeah <laughs> which is like a valid question like bro what are bro, you doing what are you doing like, like come on yeah nah they don't play they definitely do not play about that because yeah people come in with different types of stuff like sometimes people come in with toolboxes and i'm just like uh, bro, what are you doing 
yeah but some of them their 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 work is legit but i'm like i don't know if they can but that's not my job so i'm gonna let them keep it moving exactly i'm gonna say hello they got they got tsa for that exactly exactly now if you need a ride somewhere uh, you, you can come talk to me down there but right otherwise otherwise nah i'm not fam that's that's security and, and management right there yeah. <laughs> but no but yeah like yeah that's the thing like like i said yeah when i first seen you um yeah no i, I, I didn't I, it didn't go there first definitely didn't go there first um, i kind of i kind of like that i i don't want to give off that like I said, because I, I never thought of them to be, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing to be a lawyer or anything. I just, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No. I just, I, I just think it's like this still kind of proceeds as this like stuffy kind of profession mm-hmm. and don't want to give off that. No, At least not I, right now. Maybe when I'm older, I guess. Damn. I swear we get older. <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I mean, me personally, Maybe because it's just like I, I I feel as though it's good to at least know someone who's in like that world of like the law sure. and stuff like just that. Be like uh, I heard this, is this true? Like I can't tell you how many times like my client's been like, okay, so the cop didn't do this, so I know I know it's gonna get dropped, right? Mm-hmm. That's not true. That's what I was told. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you were told that, and yeah. I'm also sure that the person that told you that wasn't a lawyer. So, right, right. I don't even right. tell you yeah so just like that like i feel like it's cool to get to know that world because it's like I, from what i've I, I, you know i'm not a professional with this but just sure. from what i've learned there's so many different types of lawyers for so many different types of oh my god things yes so it's yes. like yeah you have to know yes. the right lawyer so I, I think i would say it's the worst thing in the world i became a lawyer all my freaking family and friends <laughs> want to call me about bullshit that i don't do so yeah like, hey can you help me with this contract i don't do that Hey, can yeah. you help me out with the landlord tenant thing? I don't do that. Hey, yeah. can you help me out with this uh, divorce thing? I don't do that. How, can you help me out with this? Uh, I want to sue fucking Walmart because I slipped and fell. I don't do that. Yeah. Hey, you want to help me out with immigration? I don't do that. Hey, you want me to help me out with like? I don't do that. <laughs> and Punch that's the thing. The I got you. That's it. <laughs> Very. Oh man. I stay in my goddamn lane. Yeah, dude. Like that's the thing i had to learn too there's so many different like fields and and mm-hmm. and specialties so it's just like i think yep. I, I i and you maybe can answer this but i think what's hard especially like when you know connect with people is like wh- how do you find the right lawyer for let's just say like obviously you know you need a lawyer for yep. like you said a contract so it's just like where does one even go because immediately i think google but like where is the best um, way to start that's not a bad place to start mm-hmm. um i would i mean i guess this wouldn't apply to you necessarily because you said that you kind of don't have a whole lot of contacts in that field i would i would start with trying maybe asking around hey do you do you know anybody that's been in trouble that's used a lawyer that um that you would recommend because yeah. i mean you know whatever you like you're only going to see positive reviews on google you know what i mean you're not going to see the negative for the most part i mean Right. Sure, you might see like you know, like a one scathing review or whatever. But um, so I would try to talk to somebody who's had a first. Well, I mean, I guess Google could be a good start in terms of like figuring, like getting like a list, and then from there you could try to see if anybody you know has used anybody or anybody on your list, or if you know anybody who knows anybody who's used anybody um, on that list. Right. Um, and then I would honestly enc- really encourage like asking for consultation um certain lawyers charge for them certain ones don't but i i i think it's 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 worth shopping around for um yeah you know people shop around for the right doctor that they want to you know deliver their child um you know people shop around for you know all, all kinds of other things you know a, a surgeon to do a procedure um you should do the same thing with a lawyer you should be you should be picky about it you should do you should not, um, you know, take necessarily the first opinion as gospel. I mean, the, the first person you talk to might be correct, but it's always good to verify it. And you, know, you can go back to that first person. Yeah. Um, definitely. And don't, don't like, I mean, at the end of the day, like, yes, the lawyer knows more about the law. Sure. But, you know, you're, you're at the end of the day, if it, 
it's your case. A, a, a lot of what happens is your decision. And if it, you feel like you're going to be in a situation where you're not going to have a say in what happens, then you should, that's a big red flag. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's certain, you know, areas and, 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 and parts of the case or trial where, you know, you should defer to, um, your, your, your lawyer or whatever. But if you get any kind of sense that it's like, listen, you just sit there and we're going to tell you how this is going to go. It's like, uh, that's, that's the red flag. That's, that's not a good thing. Number one. And number two, if, if any lawyers too aggressively pursuing you, yeah. that in and of itself is also a, a bit of a red flag. Gotcha. Um, so, okay. but yeah, I mean, I, I, word of mouth is the best, I, I would say, because I mean, that's really going to give you a, an indication of, you know, how much they give a shit, you know what I mean? Because they, they all have, you know, really good websites and, you know, great write-ups and, you know, testimonials and blah, blah, blah. And they probably got, you know, fancy, you know, schools they went to and stuff. But yeah, not everybody gives a shit. Um, a lot of people are in it for the money. A lot of people are in it for the money. A lot of people started out caring and then got burnt out and they don't care anymore. And now they're just in it for the money. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are just in it because they like being able to tell other people that their lawyers are cocktail parties, they just, mm-hmm. they, they get off on it. Like, Oh, I'm cool and important. And you know, people, you know, it's, 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 it's you know, it's like anything else. There's good ones and bad ones. Um, but the good ones are, are worth digging for. Um, yeah. And you definitely shouldn't just settle for the, Oh, well, this is the, the first one I found or you know, mm-hmm. what have you. Gosh. Well, okay. No. Given given nuggets on that. All right. Now I know. Yeah, to give some good nuggets. Absolutely. Okay. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, you're the best. Okay. Well, oh, okay. So let me wrap it up because I'm looking at the time and I definitely not for to hold you because I know you have I'm probably gonna no. See you. I'll see you in a few days, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to wake up early as well. Oh yeah. So I'm not going to hold you, but I'm, I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here. You, sir, are fantastic. Thank you so much for the information. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, this was definitely very like insightful, just kind of getting into this world because it's not really I haven't seen, not really talked about, and just like mental health and just like these different perspectives. So that is that. Um, but no, man, you're great. Um, like I said, I won't hold you. So guys, thank you so much for checking out this episode. Uh, thank you for really just taking the time to press play and really just get some nuggets from here. Cause I know some of the listeners I've spoken with, we've talked about like lawyers and a little bit. So just getting more insight and just hearing it from someone who does this every day who eats sleeps this like this is this literally. is literally <laughs> this is gold this is gold but uh with that like i said i'm gonna end it here any last things you want to share you know with the guest wesley any tips any things you just want to i don't know any general advice you want to share with them um don't be afraid if you're in a situation involving the police to ask questions um assert your rights Ask what they are if you're unsure. And a good rule of thumb is if a police officer is asking to do something, it's because they're not allowed to. And they need your permission to do it. If they're telling you to do it, they can do it. Like if they're saying, you need to get out of the car right now because we're searching it, you should probably listen. If they're saying, do you mind if we, can we, will you give us permission to? It's because they can't. And they need your permission to. And don't be afraid to say no, because you're allowed to. Mm, that's good to know right there. Okay, that's good. Thank you for that. I didn't get in trouble, but thank you. Thank you. That's good. To know. <laughs> that's good to know right there. Like, it's good to have the back pocket, you know, to, to tell that friend that everybody has. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, like, guys, it's an episode, you know. But no, that's, that's, okay, so that's great. No, man, thank you so much. So with that, guys, you all enjoy the rest of your day. And I look forward to speaking with all of you soon. Later, later, guys.